Here's the story of a person living beside the Myra Quarry, located just outside of Fredericton, on the railroad. In 2014, the quarry was given speedy approval to do business in a protected area for environment over the third largest aquifer in Canada and to disturb the quality of life for many people living along the railroad. The whole process violated all kinds of rules and there's been no transparency and no accountability as to how that happened in the first place. Over the past six years, that quarry has been protected and no one can figure out why. But the people who live there have not been protected by the Department of Health, Department of Environment, Department of Natural Resources, or any other political means to try to get some sense of justice, some sense of accountability, some change. So here's their story, first person, like a victim impact statement. It would be really nice if you could feel what they feel and imagine what it's like to live there and to know that this could happen in your backyard just as easily. A week, how much of your work is tied with your constituents? Phone calls, you know? Oh, that's, that's the bulk of it, and that's, that's the part of the job that I love. Yeah. You know, I get to, to uh, the COVID thing kind of interrupted it, but like, I like to look people in the eye. Like I'm, you know, looking eye kind of guy kind of thing. And I, I like going out in public and, and doing the, the, the events, like doing breakfasts and, and uh, benefits and all, all of that. Like I really enjoy going out and talking to the people and getting to know them and letting them get to know me a little bit, right? Yeah. And then the COVID thing uh, kind of had to back off. Yeah. But there were times when I would, I would drive through the, the riding. I didn't want to spook anybody, so if somebody was on the road, I would slow down and put my window down, keep my distance and say hi and tell them who I was and tell them I was just having a look around, and, you know, just, uh, just to stay in touch. Like yeah. I really love doing that, right? I met with them several times and I watched all of the all of the videos and everything that they had on the uh, the uh, Facebook page against the quarry, right? I, I watched all those videos. Like I really immersed myself into trying to understand what happened and what the issues were. And I come to the conclusion in my mind that there, there's obviously an, an injustice that has happened to those folks, and it's and I still see it today. I still believe that there's an injustice there. That is to, to deal with it is, is the really difficult part. Right? The, uh, it's like a labyrinth of decision making. Yeah. So an expectation for you as an MLA is like, oh, you can go fix it. Is that yeah. an unfair expectation? Well, it's, it's, I, I don't think I can fix it. I, the only people that can really fix it is the government with the environment minister and, and his staff like we had a lot of meetings we even had a meeting with the premier and after all of that the most recent communication i had from the minister of environment jeff mr carr i requested that they do testing for sound and fine particulate matter during peak hours or peak season season which is right about now that's when they're really busy out there, right? And he refuses to do that. Because I, I believe that that dust is probably not healthy. And, and it should be proven one way or the other. I, I would like to think the minister would care enough about those people out there that he would order peak period testing so that he, you could say once and for all whether it's unhealthy or it's not, you know what I mean? Yeah. And, and he will not do that. And that disappoints me. I can't fix it because I'm not government. Yeah. But if I was an environment minister, I would order those tests, tests to be done. I don't have any access to any more than what, uh, <coughs> excuse me, the people in the, if from the quarry, the anti uh, mayor quarry, the, that Facebook and that group and the, and the committee, Jerry and, and Judith and all those good people, right? Yeah. They, uh, <coughs> they dug as much information up as I think you can get. There's, there's information that we believe is there, but it's, it's not spoken, it's not written. We, we just believe there's like a, that there was some sort of a hidden agenda that we don't know of, right? And we can't prove. But it certainly seems that there was something else working 
in, in lurking in the shadows, so to speak, going through that whole process. Because the community indicated overwhelmingly that they did not want a quarry in their backyard. Plain and simple. But the government went ahead anyways, right? And it's, it's disheartening. It's, it's interesting, an interesting question. I, I believe that there, there should be some sort of compensation. Like if, if, uh, if, if the government would take the initiative and do the testing, and then you, then you knew one way or the other, uh, what, you know, in regards to some of those questions that aren't answered, mm. you know, we, we believe it's unhealthy, right? Mm. But you need that proven before you can actually go ahead and start talking about compensation. But I believe in my heart that there should be some form of compensation. Those people are, are living through something now that they never wanted in their lives. And if it does turn out, I don't know if we'll ever get the real answer for it, that it's not healthy, then that's gonna, that's, that's gonna give compensation argument a lot more weight, if you will, right? So I, I believe there should be compensation. And, and who, who pays it? Ultimately, the government made the decision. The government gave the okay to start it. So once it starts, then that, I believe it's the government's responsibility. Is the quarry at fault? That, that's an interesting question. But I, I would think if, if the quarry really wanted to uh, resolve some issues or, and try to resolve some problems, the quarry could take an initiative and offer some compensation and maybe some folks would take it and move away. But I mean, that would be something that I think the quarry would have to decide on their own. I'm not sure, I'm not a lawyer, so I, I don't really yeah. know that, right? Yeah, so, there's no laws requiring any of that process, so why would they, right? So that ties to another New Brunswick thing. Um, do we have a, a provincial land use policy that would help organize or prioritize or create a communication, communication strategy for when this happens? Because New Brunswick will continue to develop one way or the other. I'm not aware of any land use policy. I, I, local government probably has their policies. I, I haven't really researched them or had any, any of our researchers look at that, but there, there may well be one. You know, I mean, the, they, the government, in the very least, should look at this Mira situation as a learning, like a lessons learned, so to speak. Mm -hmm. You know, what did they do wrong? What, or what did they not do? What was lacking in the legislation? I know that when the next company came along that wanted to start a quarry, they had to do an environmental impact assessment, right? But why didn't that happen on Mira? See, that, those are the questions that the, the, the committee wants answers to, mm -hmm. right? They, they basically have done their own EIA, and they've found a lot of things. Some of the things they found out came after the, the approval process, which is like, you know, haha, we got you kind of thing, but things that were going on in the shadows that we know nothing about, yeah. but we feel that they, they were there. The Myra story is a negative example. It's like, this is happening in our backyard, but maybe you don't want it to go down that way in your backyard. That, that could very well be something that we could bring up on that new uh, climate change committee. Yeah. You know, and, and that's gonna be environmental impact. All of those things I think that committee can pull in and, and work with. And, and like, like you say, in the minority situation, the, the, the government does not control ma the majority on the committees. So the committees can do some excellent work, yeah. right? And then it's up to the committee to bring something back to the legislature that the legislature will, would react to. But I think when, when, they, when they get into doing quarries and stuff, I think the process needs to be more complex than what it was before. You know, just because you have a quarry doesn't take you away from all of the impacts, or the environmental impacts that a mine would have, right? There's a lot of the similar impacts, but they don't get pulled into the, the approval process on quarries, right? The legislation is, what I've seen, is quite simple. So it's not really complex like it would be for the cis and mine, so to speak, right? Well, it's frustrating to for me to come to understand what happened to those people, right? I, I feel for them, I have empathy for them. I understand that something happened in their lives that they didn't invite and it's having an impact on them. That bothers me to the point where, where, where we go to the government and we try to get the government to do things and the government says, I've had one, one uh, staffer tell me, we've done all we can do, right? And I'm saying, no, you haven't done all you can do. 
you, you've decided not to do anymore. That's my, in my mind, right? So that's frustrating for me as an MLA that I know the issue, I know there was an injustice done, and I can't correct it. It bothers me, right? And we've had all of those meetings, and, and the committees know the issues far better than I do, far better. Right? And for me to get them in front of the ministers and the staff and all of the people and even the premier and to get the reaction that we got in the, in the final, like this year, we, you know, the last email I got from Jeff Carr is that he's not going to do any more testing. That's disheartening. And that tells me that he doesn't care about the health concerns of those people. That's what it tells me. The government doesn't care about those people. And it does bother me as an MLA because I represent those people. I also represent the people that own the quarry. There's a bit of a conflict there. But I do know that there was an injustice done to those people. But now we got both, right? I have to deal with both. So it, it's, it's tough. But I really believe that the people should have been treated better and there should be something to, to make, make that right again.